Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I'm Arif, your Cloud Learning Journey partner. Well, in my previous videos, I saw a few comments related to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. So I saw uh, some of you are struggling with uh, creating the Elastic Beanstalk environment. Uh, and uh, today I'm here to help. So I will create Elastic Beanstalk from scratch. I will configure everything I'll show you. And after watching this video, if you follow my steps, you will have your own healthy Elastic Beanstalk environment. Well, before starting the video, I just want to talk about my experience. So I do have eight years of experience in cloud computing and cybersecurity. I do have multiple certification in AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, and also I hold CI, SSP and CCSP certification. So uh, this channel is all about uh, cloud computing, cybersecurity, and cloud security. So if you guys are interested in this topic, please uh, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel so that uh, you can see my upcoming videos. So with our further delay, let's get started. Okay, so uh, I have logged into my AWS account. So I already made a video where I explained briefly how to create an Elastic Beanstalk environment. <laughs> so uh, in today's video, I'm just gonna focus on the troubleshooting part. So uh, the questions I received, like at what point they're getting this error, so I'm gonna fix that part. So if you want to uh, learn the whole procedure, like how to create the Elastic Beanstalk environment, you can uh, visit my other video where I have explained Elastic Beanstalk very detailed. So I have logged into AWS account and uh, I am right now under the Elastic Beanstalk console. So from here, if I click in the le left panel here, uh, we can see application and environment. So first, uh, let's create an application. Uh, let's call it uh, test one. And that's all we need to define in here. And let's uh, hit the create button. Okay. So application test one. So we do have the application, but we don't have any environment under the test one application. So we need to create the environment. So I'm going to click here, create new environment. So uh, we do have two options, web server environment and work environment. Uh, I'm going to go with the web server environment in here. And then here, all the, I'm going to keep most of the thing as default. So it will be easier for you to follow. Okay, so uh, environment name is test uh, one environment. That's uh, good for me. And the platform type it should be managed. And platform uh, uh, platform here we have to define what kind of platform. So let's uh, select PHP for this tutorial. I'm gonna select PHP in here, and then we can select the uh, platform branch, and uh, we can go with uh, PHP eight point one and platform version is uh, 3.5.9, that's a recommended one. Okay, so after that, the application code. So for the application code, we don't want to upload any code because it's more of a like test thing. So we want to make sure that it's working. So here I'm gonna use the sample application that AWS provides. And uh, if you have your own code, then you have to just uh, select this, like upload your code and uh, you can upload your uh, code into S3 bucket and you can just uh, uh, define the link or the path of the S3 bucket here. So you can create any sort of uh, application like uh, uh, your application running in PHP or in Java, Ruby, Tomcat, .NET, all are available in here. All right, so I'm going to choose this sample application and uh, I'm going to go with the single instance because it's uh, under the free tier and I don't want to pay for this uh, uh, tutorial. So that's why I'm going to go for the single instance. But if you are uh, applying to deploy a production application, then you definitely need to have this sort of thing like high availability so that you will have uh, multiple instances running at the back end. Okay. So I hit the next button in here. So this is where it, it gets a little bit tricky. So uh, user ex use existing uh, role. So uh, for the sake of this video, we're gonna create a new role too. Uh, we need to give it a name. So I'm gonna call it Elastic Beanstalk Service Role 2 and uh, the key pair. So if you want to manage your instances, then you can use the key pair, but uh, we can create a key pair and attach to it, to this uh, configuration. So that's uh, totally up to you. And this is the important part, like the EC2 instance profile. So uh, 
if I show you the guidance in here now we really need to create an instance profile first and under the IAM and then we have to use the instance profile for our environment so let's do it so uh, we have we can do it in I am console so for that from uh, elastic beanstalk I am gonna look for I am that is uh, identity and access management so from here okay so from here we need to create a create a role so I'm gonna click roles and then create roles and I'm gonna go with the trusted entity type that is AWS service and the uh, use case is EC2 so after choosing this then I will click the next button in here so here we need to uh, attach the policy so if I go through the documentation so here are three sort of policies that uh, they're recommending so if you are uh, planning to use it as a web tier then you can go for this policy or you want to have one worker tier then you can go for this one and if you want to run a multi-container docker then you have to select the third option so for our tutorial I'm gonna go with this AWS Elastic Beanstalk web tier cool so I select this, uh, this one in here and I have to go back in here and I have to search for it and here we go so I selected this one then I have to go to the next section so here you can see the uh, trusted entities a little bit of JSON uh, code that is uh, showing like how we are giving or providing access to EC2 instances and everything so now we have to name it so we can call it like test to role okay so after that uh, we can just create the role Great, so now we do have this test to roll in here. So if I go back in here, I can refresh this one and now we can see our test to roll under here under the EC2 instance profile. So I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna click next. So uh, we need to define a VPC. We need to define VPC where our environment should be created. So I'm going to select the default one. This is the default one for my account. And uh, for the sake of video, I just only need one availability zone because I don't need the redundancy and other functionalities for it. And uh, we will not uh, use any database. So that's why it should be turned off in here. And uh, as we are not using database we don't need to choose the database subnets in here and I'm gonna click next here uh, let's go with the all default thing and uh, uh, we have to uh, select one of the EC2 server EC2 security groups that will be attached to our EC2 server so I'm gonna go with the default one in here too and it's a single instance one one on the one instance everything looks cool okay and I'm gonna click next all right so after that now we have to uh, configure some monitoring stuff so for managed uh, environment we really need to go with the enhanced if we go with the basic then we'll get an error so please go with the enhanced option in here and uh, after that uh, I'm good with all the uh, configurations and uh, here we can see the proxy server so we do have two options either Apache or uh, Nginx I'm gonna go with the Nginx one in here and uh, everything looks good to me and I'm gonna go to the next uh, option so it looks like it's a lot of steps but the good part is that uh, once it's deployed it's running then you don't have to manage anything so it's all managed by the AWS Elastic Beanstalk so uh, if you are new in AWS then and you need to deploy an application in AWS then it, this AWS Elastic Beanstalk is the service that will make your life really easy. So everything is ready in here and now I just need to click this submit button which I did so it will take some time so right now under the event section we will see a lot of uh, uh, events in here so I'm gonna pause this video once this environment is up and running then I'm gonna uh, continue my video so uh, if we see the events we see uh, multiple he events happen in here so the event is uh, was started then it created some elastic IP then uh, 
we see that uh, our application is available at this uh, endpoint, then successfully launch environment one, then uh, instances were added, and now it's uh, showing that it uh, the environment health has transitioned from pending to okay. So that's a very good sign, right? So uh, if we see the health, under health, the status is okay. So this instance, if we just want to look into it, this is the instance ID. Just if I go to the EC2 section in here, we gonna see the instance in here. So EC2 dashboard, here you see this is the same instance. So at the back end, uh, this Elastic Beanstalk has created everything for us. Uh, so uh, it's a pretty cool and very powerful uh, service. So uh, how are we going to test this? So here you can see that we do have a domain. So if I click in here, this domain name in here, it will open this page, the default uh, page of uh, PHP application. So congratulations, your Elastic Beanstalk PHP application is now running on your dedicated environment. That's great. So that means uh, it's working and everything is uh, working like we want it to. So for your case, if you have your application code, just uh, instead of using the sample application, you have to choose the upload code option and then you can upload your code and you'll have your own application running in this uh, Elastic Minus Doc environment. Congratulations guys for reaching this far of this video. Well, if you uh, uh, watch the whole video, I am pretty sure that now your environment is uh, perfectly up and running. So if you have any questions or any concern related to any step that I have uh, showed today, please feel free to send me a message under this comment section and I'll reply back very soon. So uh, thank you so much guys for watching my videos. That means a lot to me. I really want to help you guys to become a better IT professional. So I want to create this community where we will help each other to grow as an IT professional. So that's all for today. Please uh, like and subscribe to my channel for my upcoming videos and have a great and wonderful day.